the summer program a little bit? Okay. Our, our summer program is where we feel we make the biggest gains between high school tennis and summer program. That's where we see the most growth because now we get the kids every day. And the goal is that we have them four days a week or five days a week. Um, it's a lot of time commitment. It's, it's, it's cheaper. When you stop and count up the hours and say how much it is, it's way cheaper than winter tennis. But we realize also that some kids can't commit to five days a week because of whatever it is. So you can still do um, two hours a week and you just pay the same as the winter rate, whatever that is. Um, we run a group eight to 10 outside Upper Arlington. Why do we not run more outside? We tried to run a, a 10 o'clock group outside, 10 o'clock outside gets pretty brutal. 10 to 12, we didn't get much teaching done. We were like trying to just get the kids to survive. Uh, there's somebody in town that runs a, their, their top group one to three in the afternoon. It's like kids don't want to be out in that. Plus the issues with, we have a derm, one of our dads is a derm, and if you ever were around him and you see how much sunscreen he puts on, it's like he makes you feel guilty that you're out in the sun ever. And you know, inside, yeah, it's warmer in here. Obviously it's not back in the three air condition, but it's still better than it is being outside. So we run a 4.30 advanced group, 4.30 to 6.30, that's not the eight to 10 in the morning. We know we have summer school issues. We have some kids that maybe sign up for the eight to 10 in the morning, but have summer school issues. And maybe for part of that session, they can come and do the 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, we have every level and we tried making some of the levels longer, didn't work last year. So we're back to our winter hours, whatever, if you were in an hour class, you're in an hour class five days a week. If you're in a, um, a two hour class, you're in a two hour class the same as you were otherwise. Specific question. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, in the yellow sheet, the timing is from 12.30 to 4.30 for the superstars. 2.30. It's not 12.30 to 2.30? It's 2.30 to 4.30. 2.30 to 4.30. Okay, yeah. 2.30 to 4.30. Like, if some days, like, it's not that they can't work with my schedule. So this is why we do six weeks out of ten. When I started this program, it's like, who's going to be gone for vacation what week? If we charge only every week, and I figured out two weeks in, probably not. So I talk to the owner and I go, we need to make this program so that if somebody comes ten weeks, this is the best deal in the world. But if they can only come six weeks out of it, it's still better than it was in the winter program. But some kids might come three days a week for 10 weeks versus we don't care what it is. We don't need to know. You don't have to say, hey, I'm coming today. I'm not coming tomorrow. We have enough kids and we get enough signed up. And that was the scary part. We had enough to be able to support the owner paying the pros to be there and that we were going to be able to say, okay, we got a program. So now we are at that with every program that we run. So consequently, whatever days you need to take off, that's okay. But if, so, if you ask, sometimes we have space in other groups, we'll say you can come at this other time, but it depends on the space in other groups. It, and, it, and that's usually the 4.30 to 6.30, we have some room that we can mesh because it's a pretty range, uh, pretty big range of kids. And so we could take like a superstar and put them in and they would be at the bottom, but they would still be okay. And, and if we don't have too many, ready? Um, well, what's the question? Are you saying like, how do you get points in 14s? Yeah, like see when, when see What months August. are birthday? August. August. Yeah. I mean, about six months out from your yeah, aging up, you want to start playing the older age. <laughs> and now he's two months. What about points? Did you get anything on the 14? Only if you played the 14s. If you play 14s, they count in 12s. Yeah. If you play 16s, they count in 14s and 12s. But if you play 12s, they only count in 12s. But bigger tournaments, part of that's why they use UTR now is if somebody's younger, they don't have as many points, but they're really good, they'll still take. That's points. why UTR is sometimes good to have. If you've got a good UTR, then you could play up in an age group and get in based on your UTR rather than how many points you have. Midwest Law Tournament either going to take eight kids from the younger age group or four kids from the younger age group, or they're going to take that many kids from UTR in addition to the rankings from four teams. So if you don't play age, you get, you You're starting over you again. To start. And you might not get in Elysium. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's the worst situation. Is I didn't even I can't even get in Elysium because I don't have enough points. And so that's why we why we want to start running these other tournaments. If we run these one day tournaments, then somebody like Nikki who's going to age up could start back in February and play the one day tournaments here, and then she plays her other tournaments at, in a regular age group because she's already got this many points in 12s, now she wants to start building, and that's another way to practice. If, if I have six 115s in my age group, then I can play locally. I, uh, there's, there's a tournament here. Well, no sense playing in my age group. I can't get any more points, but I could play up in that age group and now get some points in the next age group. So now when I turn 13, does everyone know what birthdays when you change? Ready to know that. It's the first day of the month. If you turn that month, then you're now playing the older age group. So Reddy's daughter turns August 20 what? 29. But August 1st, she's now is a 14 and under. It's not your birthday, which Reddy was hoping for. <laughs> and another month. Yes, ma'am. So when you talk about the, the tournaments and you said you should be playing in tournaments that you can win X amount of matches. So if you were trying to start, that's why we would send you to the Bernard Masters because you got yeah, a better. Doing that. Okay, yeah. so you got now, now. Now this G O G G O P C. What is C O G P? It's C O G P. If you do the search for the tournaments on USDA and you just in Columbus. There's a tournament in Pickerington. There's a yeah, tournament in like the There's Academy a tournament in Hilliard. There's a tournament Columbus in every city. But is there different levels? No, to the all of those are level four. They're all lower level. Unless they say in the title like level three. So many of the kids that are playing anywhere else and going on, they will not play those tournaments. Now, maybe with the 115 points, we might see a different You'll level. get a wide range of people in those tournaments. You're gonna, you play a local tournament, you're gonna get matches that you're gonna get destroyed and you're gonna get matches that you can win and you're gonna get matches that you're comparable. The good thing about CEO is you do whatever you, there is no, they take all the kids. Yeah, you're not getting shut out of those. A lot of them are outside. Because they're outside and they have room to do it. So that's a good time to get started to get some points before you go indoors. And they're cheaper. And, yeah. and they're cheaper, right, exactly. And so you pay, I think there's a membership fee in there, a membership fee of something. You oh. can, but you don't have there. Oh, okay. You, you can just sign up on the USDA. Thank you. Other questions? Do you keep track of every kids, how they're performing, anything like, how do you store it? Do you store it? I mean, how do we? Yeah. How do we? How do you store that? I mean, my son plays here. How do you move him up or down? Or what he's doing? Uh, so I mean, I don't know what he's. He just comes here and plays. Our, so, our general is like we look every weekend at, at the tournament results and say, oh wow, so and so did really well. But if you're not in high school, you're not usually playing an HP unless you made the closed. So that's our primary. Like if you go to the closed, we. So HP be. is high performance, our top group. So our top group is high performance. Our second level is, is high performance junior, which is 14 and under. So we keep those 14 and unders in that group because they're playing basically with their own level in that. One of our biggest contributors to how we move kids, we have to have room. If we, if we have room and like when the girls are gone, we have more room. So we move the boys up. And then when the boys are gone, then we have more room to move more girls and we interact and play more. And that's why we sometimes try to play buildings also, because if we have buildings, then we can do that. In, in the summer, we're at UA, we have 10 outdoor courts and we use all 10 of those courts most of the time. It helps me also know where he's going. Is he going, he's doing good or not? So do you keep somewhere like in the back side or on your, like every week? We don't score our kids. No. We don't, but we, I mean, we kind of, no, I mean, I'm moving him up when I have space, and we when we play up and down, we're not forgetting like, oh wow, this guy played his way up. He's always playing his way up. And, this and guy played his way down. Some exactly. people are back and forth. So sometimes when we start those groups out, we might move somebody, and again, it, usually it's about numbers. We have okay, we only have this. Okay, send four kids from that group. The other thing that we try and do in moving kids up and down is somebody coming out of HP, more like superstars. How do you get into HP Junior? And sometimes that's a pretty big gap. And it's like what we ask them to do is maybe go play one day this level and one day the other level so that they get a chance to uh, get in and get their feet wet and also to see the difference in the level and, and be able to work their way up that they're going to be able to go all the way through. Um, 
the best player in our program. He, he beat everybody in superstars or whatever, and, and he beat everybody in HP Junior, and, but he was still there for a while. We tried to hold him back because we thought it was important for his development, and, and we fought some battles. Gabe's fought some battles with parents and lost. You see, he loses. <laughs> and it's like, you know, we have your child's best interest. And remember, tennis is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's not how good you are in 12s. It's how good you are in 18s. It is still that you're playing, that sometimes going too fast, all you do is lose more. And it's not as much fun to lose more. And when you end up losing more, sometimes you don't want to play more. You want to play less. And we want to, remember, we're dangling this carrot. We have to have something to motivate them. As you have to have something to motivate them to do school, right? It's like, how do you get, and if we give things, if we give everything, th there's nothing left. What, what do we do now? We're, we're stuck with what we got. And it's like, oh my God, yeah, he's in the group. What do we do, kick him back out? And it's like, <laughs> so, you know, we're aware of the psychological advantages and disadvantages, and we're not trying to penalize your child, but, and, and we've had it over the years. We've had people that have just said, if you don't put my child in HP, we're leaving. And it's like, I guess you're leaving. And, you know, the owner's okay with that. We, we can't have everybody. We can't, we could just name one class. So everything's HP. That's HP. That's HP. All the way up to 10 courses. We're, you're in HP. And it probably, you know, it doesn't matter if we, everybody, if we call everybody, well, what is that? We give, we give participation trophies. We're trying not to give participation trophies. We're trying to get them to earn it. And, and in each class, ask your child when you say, well, you want to be up there? Say, How'd you do today in games? How many, how many did you win? Did you win all your games today? No. But we have, you know, we have kids that that's their whole goal. And that was Kevin Metcalf when he came in. It was to win every game every day. How do you bring it when you got the worst partner? And Kevin always got the worst partner because we weren't going to put the best two with him. He always, and all the, you know, he always loved it when he played the best two. And how could he get his partner to be able to play up to that level to be able to. But we watch the kids in the class. And if somebody's winning, it's like, you're, you're gone. Get over there. We have that happen all the time. So we, we're not moving somebody out of superstars for age. The superstar is the most common group that somebody's like, I want to move out of superstars. What people don't understand, we have the most, we put the most coaching in. We're putting That's our biggest developmental that. section develop of kids. kids. We try and get skills before we let kids go out. Because by the time you go to HP Junior, there's more kids in the class and they're not, we don't have the chance to develop all those skills. They don't have those skills. Now we don't go back and teach those skills because we're trying to take those kids to HP. So part of it is, when we name this, this is what we want before. And, and our biggest problem is we get kids into these higher level classes that Just haven't. Just because they're older. Yeah. And that doesn't work out. And it doesn't work well. They don't. Work they get drunk. Yeah. Great question. Though. And, and, you know, this is where, this is yeah, where this individual is lessons sometimes help get a, a child caught up. So all of a sudden somebody becomes way better than their skills. Now it's like, how do private lessons help? It's about skill development to try and make these skills so that they can go out and use them competitively. Not everybody starts the same, you know, not everybody develops the same rate, not everybody starts at the same time. So there's- Not everybody has do, the interest at the same level. We don't really have like, this is a cutoff age group. We, that's why we don't do this. The biggest change that we try and make is from stars, we, tr we want kids that are 11 years old out of the green dot balls. That's the biggest thing. So we have this thing called shooting stars, which is the same as stars, but now it's for 11 and over that are using real balls. Plus we try and use the real balls in the stars class. We're trying to develop them and get them going. But as soon as we do, then we get Nikhil, who's eight years old into the stars class and is playing with the, the 10 year olds. And now it's like, okay, it's ridiculous to put Nikhil in a real ball that's gonna bounce this high over his head. And he's going like this and poking the ball. And so, you know, it, we, we balance that part. And we do the same thing with the orange dot coming out of future stars. I, mean, I don't know anybody's future stars. And future stars is our class where we feel we want those. We want to get everybody into future stars because that's where we feel we hook them on tennis because it's their chance to start playing on a real court and playing. And it's like somebody down here with orange balls trying to get them to play the game. And our our biggest philosophy that differs from everywhere else is we are trying to get everybody to play the game. We don't want to lessen you to death. We want your kids to play. 
We want him to love playing, not to love coming and playing four corners and 